Lord, I lift your name on high. 
You. 
the time just, just fan off and I'm just thinking, you know, this is the way that I, I need to always to be on time. Because we do not know when the Lord has our evangelist um, order and said, if he was to come, I'm coming now. If he was to say, I'm on my way, praise the Lord, I'm just getting the chariots in order to blow the trumpet and to descend. You know, what would our answer be? And for that reason, we need to always be ready, always be on time, because God, we don't know when, we know the signs of the times are showing us that he's on his way. We don't, but we don't know when he will put in his appearance. So this morning, I want us all to lift up our voices, to give him the praise, to give him the adoration, to thank him for all that he has brought us through. This week, for everyone, it's been a different week. So, some, some of us may have sailed through it. Some of us may, may have had a very difficult time. But no matter what, the Lord has brought us through. The songwriter said he has done great things. He has flown every trap that the devil has set in front of us and given us the victory again and again. So this morning, just this, this afternoon, just, just, just let us lift up our voices. Give him praise, give him thanks for all the benefits that he has bestowed upon us. This morning we're going to sing 296 from our Pentecostal hymnal, Grace is the Lord. Praise the Lord. 296 from our Pentecostal hymnal. Those that have, can you please share the screen? Those that seem to be working. Thank you. 
the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, all we have to do is hail him. Hail him and sound his name abroad. Praise the Lord. Another songwriter said, how to reach men of every birth is just to lift him up. All we have to do is just to lift him up. And he will do the drawing. We don't have to do anything else but lift him up. Praise him from the ends of the earth, knowing that he is God and there is no one like him. Praise him because he has given us the breath of life this morning. He has allowed us to wake up in our right minds. Praise the Lord. Allowed us to walk into church to give him praise, to lift him up. That's all we have to do is praise him because he is worthy of the praise. From the, from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof, there is none like our God. Praise the Lord. And more needs Praise the Lord. Amen. Our scripture this afternoon is taken from Hebrews chapter 11. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11 from 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is a well-known scripture. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11 from 1 to 6. And those who still have a Bible, can we just share our Bibles, please? Praise the Lord. And the Lord needs the Lord. If you're able to stand, can you stand for the reading of God's word? And we're going to read authentically in Jesus' name. Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith we able offer them to God. And the Lord is going to sacrifice the pain by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, that by it is he is even dead and yet he By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Six, will we together? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May the Lord have his richest blessings on these before we work. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing for prayer. Um, in number 284 from our Pentecostal hymnal. Two eight four. It is the blessed hour of God. <coughs>
come over this morning. Rule and direct us, O oh Lord. Bless each and every one that gathered here this morning. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us and help us that when we left from here, we may say it was good for us to be in this your presence this morning. Bless and give, sanctify and bless as we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' precious name.
flesh and spray. But with a conquering thread, we're going to push ahead and we're going to roll the sea away. Praise the Lord. We've got 10 minutes to have a quick testimony service. Anybody that can say what to tell us what the Lord has done for them this week, how they have been overcomers, how they have been brought through and been overcomers with no matter what goes on. Praise the Lord. Anyone? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 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 And I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm here at the traffic lights. Cars are here. One car there, one car there. And there's a third lane, but there's nothing in it. The lights were green, but then they, they turned red. And I'm thinking, but I need to get to work on time. So I need to rush to get to the van. So I'm thinking, do I run across the road? And I'm looking at the cars and looking at the lights, and it's red, but nothing's coming. So I'm thinking, okay, it's going to change, but I've just got time to run across the road. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll just jog across. And I jog across and I'm watching the lights and I'm watching these two cars. All of a sudden the light turns green. And in the outside lane, whoosh, the car's trying to time the lights and break through. And Saints, I can't tell you whether I actually ran across in front of the car or whether something just held me back and the car zoomed across. But I realized that my life flashed in front of me Amen. in that very second. And the speed the car was going, if it hit me, I would have been up in the air, I would have landed broken bones, or worse, I would have been dead. Yes. But I give God thanks. Amen. Amen. Because I don't know, I can't tell you, I can't remember what happened. It just happened to be such a blur and such a flash. But just the fact that I was here last week, and you could have heard that I was no more. Amen. But I want to give God thanks. Hallelujah. And I want to tell everybody that God is a protector. Amen. God, Amen. He keeps Amen. us. He keeps, he keeps, he keeps us. Yeah. Just something as simple as that, as going to the bank to get some money. Amen. It could have been the end of my life. Amen. But thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Is there anybody else got a testimony? We are overcomers by our testimony, saints. No testimony. Praise the Lord. We're going to go forward with our service. Well, Lord, let me first say my testimony. Praise the Lord. You know, this week I was off work, which is a bit of a surprise, but I was off work. Um, and I'm thinking, I've got this, I've got that, I've got this, I've got that to do. And then um, on Sunday night, our bishop put out about the fasting. But I didn't know that it was planned for this week. And I thought, I had already made plans for this, that, and the other. And you know, when I looked at him, I thought, sometimes when they put out fasting, I'm not able to fast because I'm at work. And because I work nights, it's very difficult to fast when you're actually in work at night. So um, I haven't been able to fast. But then this week, I said, you know what? This, that, and the other is gonna have to go on the back burner. Because this, I'm gonna fast this week because I'm at home. I've got no problems, nothing to distract me. I will be fasting this week. And you know, sometimes you say that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But the Lord always puts another thing in the way. All we have to do is listen to his voice and to hear his call. Because no matter what we're going through, he is our protector, as our minister Cynthia has already said. He is our provider. And without him, surely we would be nothing. We'd be sailing upon a sea that got no sails, probably just rolling on and rolling on. But with God in the vessel, we can surely smile at the storm. And I can say that I have been victorious. Strength has been gained, and I am just going to keep on, keep on going on, because the Lord is good, and there is nothing too hard for our God to do. It may seem as if the storms are so high. When we look in Florida, we look at Ukraine, the things that are going on, but God is keeping us in yes. this corner of the vineyard. And for that, we have to give him praise. We have to thank him. We have to lift him up. 
because he is God and there is no one else like him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask our praise team, or probably our, sister, our evangelist, sorry, Beckford to sing for the gathering of the morning tithe and offering. And we're going to ask our sister on the Casco to bless it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we all stand, please? <coughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we honor and we glorify your name. We give you thanks, Lord God, for sparing our lives that we can even find ourselves into your courts. We thank you, Lord God, for the mind that you've given us to be in your courts. And now, Lord Jesus, as we're about to give back a portion of what you've blessed us with, Lord God, we know the situations have changed. We know things are hard. Well, you said, as long as we give it in your name, little is much when God is in it. So as long as we give it in love and we give it in unity, Lord Jesus, it will go to the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
to make God smile. How to make God smile? Let's make it about him this afternoon. So often we are self-centered and it's all about me. But today it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, how can I make him smile? That is the burning question of the day. In the natural, we all have people in our lives that we want to please, we want to impress them, or we want to make them smile. And it is the people that we have a relationship with him, with them. It's wives and husbands, children and parents, friendship groups. When you're close to someone, you know what they like, you know what they don't like. Now, if my husband doesn't like pork, doesn't make any sense that he turns up for his dinner and I give him pork chops. He's just going to turn up his nose. My children know exactly how to get my attention. If they want anything, it's, Mom, you know that you're the best mom in the world? And so on and so forth. But my nephew, my nephew takes it to another level. level. He will come and he'll say, you know, you are the best auntie. You're the best auntie in the world. And then he'll go to the door and he'll look and he'll listen and he'll see if any of his other aunties are out there. Because when he's ready, he uses the same spiel on everybody. You're the best auntie in the world. Has anybody ever told you that? Yes, Chris, you've told me. But I haven't seen you for a long time. Chris, I saw you last week. But it seems such a long time. And would you like a cup of tea? And now I'm thinking, he needs something. He wants something. He's not even saying what he wants, but by the time he's finished, whatever he asks for, I'm gonna say, yes, Chris, here you are. It got to a stage that Christian wanted some cinnamon swirls, and we went into Costco. I went into Costco with my husband, went to the place where they usually keep these cinnamon swirls, and there was none there, and I thought, oh, they haven't got any, any. Then I realized, oh, but they've changed everything around. I started in one aisle and I went down. I went up, I went down. I searched high and low to get the cinnamon swirls. And I'm saying all this because I knew that when I turned up and said, Chris, I've got something for you, then the smile on his face when he saw those cinnamon swirls, it, it, it was just priceless. <laughs> yeah. But God says in his word that there are things that we can do to please him. Having faith and trust in him pleases him. So Hebrews 11 verse 6 Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We must believe that God truly exists. Amen. Brethren and friends, we know that God is real. He's real in my soul. He is real. I know he's real. Nobody has to convince me. I know he's real. Praise the Lord. And
and God will reveal himself to those who earnestly and diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God wants us to accept him for who he is. He is almighty God. He is the all-sufficient one. He is the one who is able to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what the world's saying. It doesn't matter how the economy's going. It doesn't matter that the pound is going down, 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 and then it goes up, and then it goes down again. It doesn't matter what is going on. God is in control. Amen. It says in, in that Psalm 2 that when all these things are happening in the world and when the, the men of the earth are making up their schemes to do this, that and the other, it says that God just sits in the heavens and he laughs. Why? Because he knows that he is in complete control and he knows that he runs things and that ultimately everything will work according to his will and according to his way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Without faith, we can't please God no matter how we might try. We've heard it over and over again. But faith is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things that we can't see yet. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see them yet, that is faith. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No matter what the scientists may say. The word of God says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word. God simply commanded, he just spoke it. He said, let there be light in Genesis, and there was. As the psalmist explained in Psalms 33 verse six, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He goes on to say in verse 9, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. We did not see God in creation, but we believe it by faith. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The all of faith gives us many examples of people of faith who please God. People of faith who knew how to make God smile. Praise the Lord. And Abel gave the perfect sacrifice. Enoch walked with God until God just took him on. Can you imagine that? Walking and talking with God, praising Him, magnifying Him, Amen. giving Him all the glory that is due unto His name. And suddenly you find yourself in another place. Praise the Lord. Amen. Enough walk with God. Noah was obedient. Can you just imagine that? We're talking about a time when they had not experienced rain. Yet God said, I want you to build an ark because it's going to rain. God gave him the dimensions. And when I was working with the children, we found out that this ark was so massive. It was like putting 22 buses end to end. And believe me, it would have to be massive because for it to have two of every kind of animal and provision for them, then there needed to be plenty of space. And imagine Noah's out there 
and is building. Friends come past. What are you doing there? I'm building an ark. What's an ark? Oh, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big ship sort of thing um, to put all the animals in and to save us. So what are you want to save us from? It's going to rain. What's rain? Well, God told me that I needed to do this. So you have people going up to Noah, just looking at him and laughing, thinking that he's mad. And at that thing, some people and friends come and ridicule them. Then they would have left the ark and forgot it and gone off with friends. Because people these days are easily swayed by friends and peer pressure. But thank God that Noah stood firm and that he was obedient. Praise the Lord. And in the end, it was just Noah and his family and two of every kind of animal that was saved. And I could imagine that there were people that were going up to the ark, trying to knock and wanting to get in, but the door was closed. Mercy had gone, praise the Lord. And so as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end of days. Praise the Lord. That is why, as the song said, we need to make sure that we're ready because the signs of the time are everywhere. We need to be ready. Praise the Lord. Abraham was a man of faith. And it takes faith to get up and leave your country and your family, everything that you know, and go on a journey somewhere you don't even know where you're going. God said, go, and you don't even know where you're going. It takes faith. You don't even have an heir. And you've reached a time that it's in your own age. And God's promising you that your descendants are going to be like the, the sons of the sea. It takes faith. Praise the Lord. Faith pleases God. Keeping his commandments pleases God. It says in 1 John 3, 22, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do things that are pleasing in his sight. And you know the, the um, Pharisees tried to catch Jesus out and somebody went up to Jesus and said, which is, which is the most important commandment? And Jesus answered them like this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second and most important is similar. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And you know, if you do those things, you're not gonna have a problem with the others, because if you love the Lord as he is supposed to be loved, you're not going to have a problem with any graven images. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to lie, you're not going to backbite, you're not going to gossip, you're not going to murder, you're not going to commit adultery, you're not going to do any other things that he said in the other commandments. Because the Bible said that all of these things stem from these, all of those things stem from these two laws and they are fulfilled if you obey them. If you keep those two, you will find that you're obeying all the others. Praise the Lord. We can please God by walking 
in his word. Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. So the book of the law, in their time, they had the book of the law. In our time, we have the whole Bible, the inspired word of God. Praise the Lord. It is, it is like our roadmap for life. Anything that we need to know about, it's in the book. Any way that we want to live, everything we need to know about this Christian way of living, it's in the book. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said that there are benefits from, from living according to the book. Then your way will be prosperous. Then you will have good success in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, in the book of Isaiah, and specifically in Isaiah 55, verse 11, the Lord himself tells us that his word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish the thing what it pleases and prosper in the thing for which it's sent. So not only do we read the book, we live by the book, and we use the word of the book. When we pray, we pray according to the word of God. We tell God, we, tell, we, we say God's word back to him. Praise the Lord. For example, if I say to my children, if, if, um, if you've done, well, what I, what I would say to them when they were younger, now they're just big people and they just do their own thing. When they were younger, if I said to them, if you do your chores, then you can have the PlayStation for an hour later on. So, they would listen to my word and they would remember it. They'd finish their chores and they'd come back and they'd say, Mom, I've finished my chores. And if I had forgotten, then they would remind me and say, Mom, you said if we finish our chores, we can take out the PlayStation. Can we take it now? So I have to say yes. So, if I'm feeling sick, I get out the word of God concerning sickness. I'm going to take out 1 Peter 2, 24. I'm going to get down in prayer and I'm going to say, Lord, I'm coming to you according to your word. Your word says in 1 Peter 2, 24, that by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Therefore, according to your word, I declare that I'm healed of back pain in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm healed from blood pressure in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell his word back to him because the scripture said that his word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish the thing for which it was sent. And whatsoever God says in his word, he will do it. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, we have to make more use of the word. Praise the Lord. We have to remind God of what he said. Because even though he doesn't forget, when we bring it to his attention, then we know that it will be accomplished. Praise the Lord. Amen. When we're walking in the word and we're living according to the word and following the principles of the word, we are all 
also walking in the spirit because God's word is spirit and God's word is life. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said that they that walk after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh. So if you're just bothering about what's going on around you, then those things are the things that are going to bother you. But they that, they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, when you're living in God's word, then you begin to mind the things of the spirit. The things that are important to you are going to be the things that have eternal value. Everything else pales into insignificance because you've got your priorities straight and you know where you're going. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 verse 8. God is not impressed by pretense or performance. We live in a world where everybody is intent on performance. I need to stage my picture for my selfie on social media. And when I stage it, it's giving people a certain impression of me. I think it was about 18 months ago, there was a company which was reported on the news that they had um, they changed their returns policy because a whole lot of young people were ordering and receiving outfits, taking their selfie to make it look like they're prosperous, they're going places, and they've got plenty of money. And then once they've taken their picture, they returned the garments. So the company decided to change the return to pop policy so that that couldn't happen. Pretense is going on so much in the world, we can't let it creep into the church. I've noticed that sometimes when people get up to do something, even in the church, you see a performing spirit and anybody that is filled with the Holy Ghost, you are able to discern what is real from what is pretense. Because when somebody is operating in the spirit, when somebody is singing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, nobody has to tell you because you feel it right deep down. When somebody gets up and they begin to perform, then I don't know about you, but my spirit begins to grow cross. We need to stamp out performance in the house of God because God wants true worshippers and he wants those that worship him to worship him in spirit and in truth. Pretend don't please God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing makes a difference when we worship him in spirit and in truth he's right here in the midst of us and he's blessing us praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus it's easy to worship god when everything is going well but what about when things begin to turn on their head? Can you worship God in your dark season? Can you worship God when nothing seems to be going right? Hallelujah. 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 Minister Sidney says sometimes when things are dark, God is working in the background and we don't know it. But can we still worship him in those times when we don't know what's going on? 
I saw Paul and Silas in Acts 16 verses 24 to 26 who having and they who having received a charge they were thrust in the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks and at midnight you would have thought that at midnight they would have either been sleeping or complaining and saying we didn't deserve this we didn't do anything we shouldn't be here but at midnight Paul and Silas prayed they sang praises to God and the prisoners heard them sometimes when we're talking you don't know who's listening sometimes when you're singing you don't know who's hearing the prisoners heard them you don't know what effect that that had on the prisoners praise the lord what manner of men are these they're in the stocks they're bound they're not complaining but they're praising god what manner of men can they be praise the lord and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken praise the lord and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose praise the lord our god can break every chain there is no form of bondage that you can be going through that god cannot break he is able to break every chain praise the lord hallelujah i told a story once before that my grandmother was saved for many years and my grandfather wasn't and when the grocery came each week because we used to have the groceries, groceries delivered then there would be a big stash of cigarettes for my grandfather and he would smoke like a chimney my, my, my grandmother prayed for years and years but in God's own time God saved him by his grace and the more the, the, after he went down into the baptism pool and he came back out. He rose to walk in the newness of life and he became a new creature. Even the very, even the very smell of the cigarette, he didn't want to smell it. The desire completely left him. Um, I'm telling you that to say that this is what God can do. You don't have to go cold turkey when it comes to God. When God breaks the chains, he breaks the chains. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No addiction that God cannot cure. So, the wise King Solomon said that when our journey or our pathway is pleasing to God, it results in favor and blessing. And many of us heard Sister Veronica's testimony last week and God provided her with a house that she didn't build, a house that she didn't pay for. And it wasn't my testimony, but when we had prayer meeting on Monday night, I had to tell Sister Veronica's testimony because I wanted my family to know that God is the same yesterday, today and forever and what he did back in the day he can do today and I just wanted them to know this is the God that we serve Amen. praise the Lord Amen. praise the Lord Amen. that is favor that is blessing praise the Lord Proverbs 16 verse 7 says when a man's ways please the Lord 
he meant even his enemies be at peace with him. And I was looking at King David, and King David fled from King Saul, and he ran to God. That was the home of his enemy. And if you remember, Goliath, the giant, was from God because he was called Goliath of God. And Ash, Ash, Akish, the king of the Philistines, allowed David to remain for 16 months in his territory and no one touched a hair on his head because when a man's ways please the Lord, he meant even his enemies to be at peace with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No wonder David said in Psalms 23 verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are ways that we can please God. There are ways that we can make him smile. Praise the Lord. And here's one for the children. So, children, I want to let you know that God is pleased when children obey their parents. Colossians 3, 20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things. That is, do what mom and dad says in all things, for this is well and pleasing unto the Lord. And if you honor your father and your mother, then the Lord will give you long life. Praise the Lord. So it is in your best interest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If there's anybody within the sound of my voice that is not saved today, it would please God if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Apostle Peter told the crowd how to please God on the day of Pentecost. His words in Acts 2, 38 are still valid for you today. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Brethren and friends, let us go out of our way to please God. Let us go out of our way to make God smile today. Our earnest desire should be to please him. Amen. To please the one who was thinking of us before we were even thinking about him. The Bible said, God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. And if you were the only person on this earth, he would have still have died for you. Same way. Praise the Lord. Brethren and friends, let us please God. I'm just going to ask you all to stand with me right now. Praise the Lord. So, you know, to, to please God, what we have to do is to show him how much we love him. Hallelujah. To please God, we're not, we're, not, we're, not looking, we're not looking into his hand now. We're not looking for him to give us anything. We're not 
asking for anything. We're not looking into his hand. I want us all to just be able to look in his face. I want you to look in his face. Just like I said, my nephew, turn to me and tell me what an awesome auntie I am. I want you to look into his face. I want you to tell him, God, you're awesome. God, I love you. God, I honor you. God, I adore you. God, I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Audrey said, how would you praise him if you knew that it was the last minute? If you knew that Jesus was coming right now, how would you praise him? Brethren and friends, you need to break the alabaster box right now. You need to give him glory right now. Hallelujah. He's been good to us. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. He put us in our right mind. Hallelujah. All our needs is able to supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The choir, I want you to sing for me. It is to you I give the glory. As we look into his face, I give the glory. Give him the glory. It is to you. I give the praise. He's done so much for us. You have done so much for me. I will. 